This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hi everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and today we're going to be looking at 3D depth maps. Yes, another feature found within the 3D engine within Photoshop CC, and this does apply to Photoshop CS6 as well. So if you're still on that version, you have the ability to do this as well. What we're going to do today is to create a flag that looks like it's waving in the breeze. And we're going to start with simply a flat layer that I've got here. And what we're going to do is start out right away by going to the 3D menu, choosing New Mesh from Layer, and then choosing Depth Map. And under Depth Map 2, we're going to choose Plane. Now you could achieve the same thing if you've got your 3D workspace active by going to the 3D panel and with selected layers as the source you could choose mesh from depth map and make sure it's set to plane and then click create and this will give you the same effect. And what you're going to do is to get something that looks like this. Now this is pretty cool and it looks a little bit dangerous but this is not what we're after. The colors within the image are used as the depth map where lighter colors cause the image to come forward and darker colors cause the image to recede backwards. Now what we're going to do is we're going to split up the depth map from the diffuse colors here and treat them separately. And the way that we're going to do that is by clicking here in the 3D panel under depth map and then we're going to go to the Properties panel and choose Edit Source. And here we see the original source, and this is what's being used as the depth map for our image. Now in order to see what's happening, I'm going to choose Window, Arrange, and I'm going to tile these windows horizontally. Then I'll zoom out just a little bit so we can see what's happening here. I'll click here and zoom out on this one as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm first going to replace this depth map which has a colored image with plain 50% gray and I'll do that by choosing edit fill and then from the fill menu I'll choose 50% gray now as soon as I do that if I press control or command s to save we'll see a change to the 3d object here we no longer have the radical depth going on we still have the original diffuse colors that are on a different map within the 3D object, but the depth map is now completely flat. What we can do, however, is we can paint on this depth map. So I'm going to go and get the paintbrush tool, and then I'm going to set my foreground color to black, and using a fairly large and soft brush, I'm going to set my opacity to around 10%, just to make sure that I'm doing this gently. Now I'm going to paint across the depth map and watch what happens here in the 3D panel. I've created a distortion in the 3D image. I'll paint another one and I'll paint another one and maybe one more. Now that's painting with black and what I'm doing is I'm pushing back in these areas of the image to create a ripply effect. Now I can switch my foreground color to white. And when I do, I can paint in between. And I can bring the image forward by using the white color. Maybe I want the corner here to come forward just a little bit more. So I can create that effect. Once I've got the effect I want, I can even smooth it out a little bit further by choosing Filter and then choosing Blur and Gaussian Blur. And then I'll blur it just a little bit, maybe 20 pixels or so. And then again if I hit Control or Command S to save, we can see now that the ripples on the flag are a little bit smoother. We can close this image now because we're done with it and we're back to our 3D image. If I select the Move tool and make sure that I'm in the 3D Rotate mode, I can grab the scene and move it around 
and we can see that sure enough this flag is a real 3D object with real ripples on it. We can even go here in the 3D panel and grab the infinite light and by adjusting the end of this handle we can change the light and look at how that affects the folds in the flag. So this is quite a nice effect and we can adjust this however we want. Once we've got our 3D image looking the way that we want to, we can bring in some additional elements, perhaps a flagpole and perhaps a background image. And in order to facilitate this just a little bit better, I'm going to take this 3D layer and with this layer selected, I'm going to press Control Alt Shift E or Command Option Shift E to make a copy of it and then I'll turn the 3D version off. Now if I bring the background back in, I can actually work on this copy of the layer and transform it even a little bit further, perhaps with a warp tool, and I can constrain it and move it and make it match the flagpole just a little bit more. We can drag this around and do some other things with it, but we've got a tremendously realistic fold and ripple here with the lighting effects all created within Photoshop 3D. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop, Lightroom, and photography tips and tricks and related Adobe information there. You can follow me on Twitter at mhoffman2001, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.